Senate Resolution 60 by Senator Fuller relative to California Aerospace Days. Senator Fuller. Thank you, Madam President, members and guests. Senate Resolution 60 proclaims today and tomorrow as California Aerospace Days. SR 60 recognizes the impact this industry has had on our economy and also the role our state has played in aerospace history. California continues to lead the world in the design, testing, and production of aerospace firsts. Today, our state is home to pioneering space companies like Virgin Galactic and SpaceX, but also three NASA research centers. Just last week, Virgin Galactic rolled out their newest version of Spaceship Two, the VSS Unity. This unveiling is another example of the groundbreaking work being accomplished in Mojave and across the state. Stephen Hawking, the world-renowned physicist, helped Sir Richard Branson name the new vehicle and plans to fly on it someday. Even Harrison Ford was there to celebrate the event. I hope you can join us today for our hearing at 3 in room 4203 and our reception at 5 in the Governor's Council Room. Tomorrow, there are many wonderful exhibits on display on the West Steps from 11 to 5 in the evening. Please join me in recognizing the aerospace industry in California and its bright future by supporting SR60. And thanks to my colleague, Senator Allen, for helping. Senator Allen. Well, I want to join my chair uh, for the Senate Select Committee on Defense and Aerospace. I serve as the vice chair, and I'm just proud to co-author SR60, which celebrates the importance of aerospace to California. Uh, some folks may not know, but the South Bay of Los Angeles County in my district has often been called the brain trust of the aerospace industry. Innovations originating out of aerospace research uh, include weather forecasting, wireless and long-distance communications, uh, computer joysticks, water filters, the artificial heart, and the electric car. The LA Air Force Base in El Segundo is the only active duty military base in the LA area. It's home to the Space and Missile System Center which develops, deploys, and sustains the U.S. military's space systems, including GPS, military satellite communications, defense, meteorological satellites, and space-based infrared systems. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman all have facilities in the South Bay employing my constituents in, in high-skilled, good-paying jobs. In fact, uh, as some folks have, have mentioned before, the studies estimate that the aerospace industry's revenues in the state are at $61.6 billion annually, which is roughly equivalent to the revenues of California's agriculture and entertainment industries combined. Uh, and of course, currently within California's government, there's no official unified voice for advocating on behalf of aerospace interests. And it's one of the reasons you'll be hearing uh, later from me for about SB 1215, uh, which will establish a, a California Aerospace Commission. It would be an advisory commission that would act as a clearinghouse and point of contact for aerospace-related issues and identify and recommend changes in state law and policy that enhance the development of aerospace-related activities throughout California. We want to work in, in tandem with some of the efforts that, uh, that Senator Fuller has uh, in this area, too. So we're working closely with her, closely with Senator Runner, to help ensure that California is the undisputed worldwide epicenter of commercial, academic, and government-related aerospace activity. We thank the men and women of aerospace and congratulate them on a job well done in helping to protect our nation. Urge your eye vote on SR60, and please do join us with some of the Aerospace Days activities that are going to be happening over the course of the day today. Thank you so much. Here. Thank you. Uh, Senator Fuller, would you like to close? Just ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Seeing none, ayes 40, no 0. The resolution is adopted. File item 50. Again, in Senate third reading, file item 50. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 108 by Senator Monning relative to Rare Disease Day. Senator Monning. Thank you, uh, Madam President and members. Uh, it's my honor today to present Senate Concurrent Resolution 108. It recognizes today, February 29th and the last day of February, every year thereafter, is Rare Disease Day in California. A disease is considered rare if it has a prevalence of fewer than 200,000 affected individuals in the United States. And it is estimated that rare diseases affect almost one in 10 Americans, the vast majority being children. Members, Rare Disease Day will help inform the public about the challenges faced by those living with rare diseases and encourages all of us to come together to find ways to remove barriers for treatment and develop new diagnostic and therapeutic procedures for rare diseases. 
I want to thank the many co-authors from both houses, and I know we have some of the supporters and advocates here with us in the chamber today. I want to offer them a welcome as I ask for your aye vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Mani. We see some of your guests here in support of, the, of the, the, the resolution in the gallery. We observe that they are here. Dr. Pan? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, too, want to stand in strong support uh, and thank uh, the good Senator from Carmel for uh, authoring this uh, important resolution. I think, as he mentioned, uh, when we talk about rare diseases, they may be rare as individual diseases, but collectively, they actually impact a very large number of Californians and their family and their friends. And again, it's important for us to remember as we talk about various policies related to health care coverage and so forth, that this is that rare diseases are not rare collectively and that we need to work together to help all Californians. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Monning, please close. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Again, as has been stated, it may be a rare disease in classification for families and loved ones struggling with a rare de disease diagnosis. Uh, for them, it is uh, very much prominent and we need to work together. Members, I urge your aye vote. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Hearing and seeing none, ayes 40, no, zero. The resolution is adopted. File item 47. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 98 by Senator Bell relative to developmental services. Senator Bell is not at his desk. We'll move on to governor's appointments. Oh. Senator Runner, would you like to take a file item 62? File item 62, Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 127 by Assemblymember Baker relative to Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Senator Runner. Thank you, Madam uh, President and members. Uh, it's my honor to present ACR 127, which declares February 12th, 2016, as the anniversary of President Abraham Lincoln's birth. Uh, he became our nation's 16th president in 1861 and served through his assassination in 1865. On January 1, 1863, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared all persons held as slaves in the Confederacy to be free. President Lincoln's vision and leadership brought our nation through the Civil War, one of the darkest chapters in our history. He will always be known as one of our greatest presidents for his unwavering commitment to the preservation of equality and justice. We should all strive to follow his example of leadership during times of diversity. I ask your I vote in support of ACER. 127. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Any discussion or debate? Any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Hearing and seeing none, ayes 40, no, zero. The resolution is adopted. Moving on to governor's appointments. File item 40. Mr. Mr. Pro Tem, please Thank proceed. You. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Colleagues, uh, we have file item number 40. We have Mr. Uh, Russell Nichols, the Director of Division of Enterprise Information Services. Uh, he is responsible for all of the systems that keep the Department of Corrections running. This includes everything from prisoners' health records to the new VPASS program that allows families to schedule visiting times. He's well qualified for his position. Uh, he passed on a bipartisan vote, uh, Democrats and Republicans, on the 5-0 to zero in the Senate Rules Committee. Madam President, as well as colleagues, I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Bates? Aye. Bell? Barry Hill? I Block, I Canella, I De Leon, I Fuller, I Gaines, I Galjani, 
Aye. Glazer? Aye. Aye. Hall? Aye. Hancock? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Aye. Hertzberg? Aye. Hill? Hueso? Aye. Huff? Aye. Jackson? Lada? Leno? Aye. Leva? Aye. Lou? Aye. McGuire? Aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Morlock? Aye. Morrell? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Nelson? Aye. Pan? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Roth? Aye. Runner? Stone? Aye. Vidak? Aye. Wachowski? Aye. Wolk? Wolk? Aye. Please Anderson. call the absent members. Anderson? Aye. Bell? Hill? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Lada? Runner? Aye. Please call the absent members one last time. Bell? Aye. Lada? Aye. 39. No. Zero. The appointment is confirmed. File item 41, Mr. Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, we have Michelle uh, Bolat, uh, Dev uh, Ganadev, uh, Brandy Hotkins, as well as Sharon Levine, all members of the California uh, Medical Board. Uh, Dr. Michelle Bolat is a professor of family medicine at the University of California at Los Angeles. Uh, Dr. Dev Ganadev is being reappointed uh, to this board. Uh, Dr. Randy Hopkins uh, is a professor at the Charles Drew University of Medicine in South Los Angeles. And Dr. Sharon Levine uh, is being reappointed. Uh, all of them are very well qualified. It's a reflection of incredible uh, uh, diversity. Uh, all appointees from the governor were uh, voted in the affirmative in a bipartisan fashion. Democrats and Republicans, five to zero vote in the Senate Rules Committee. Madam President, as well as colleagues, I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye. Bates? Aye. aye. Bell? Aye. aye. Berryhill? Aye. aye. Block? Aye. Canella? Aye, De Leon. Fuller. Aye. Gaines. Aye, Galjoni. Aye, Glazer. Aye, Hall. Aye, Hancock. Aye, Hernandez. Aye, Hertzberg. Aye, Hill. Aye, Hueso. Aye, Huff. Aye, Jackson. Aye, Lada. Aye, Leno. Aye, Leva. Aye, Lou. Aye, McGuire. Aye, Mendoza. Aye, Mitchell. Aye, Monning. Aye, Morlock. I'm Morell, Wynn, I Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Wolk, Wolk I. I 38. You sure may. Please call the absent members. De Leon, I I Morell, I. That was a good call, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. I 40, no, zero. The appointments are confirmed. File item 42. Mr. Secretary, uh, Mr. Pro Tem, please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, colleagues, file number 42 is Ms. Uh, LeBron, uh, Renee LeBron, who's a member of the State Board, uh, State Bar of uh, Trustees. She brings a business uh, background to the State Bar. Uh, the bar needs to reorganize some of their processes and she'll be available uh, asset in that uh, endeavor. Uh, she is also, she also was uh, uh, supported on a bipartisan uh, vote in the Senate Rules Committee, five to zero. Uh, Madam President, as well as colleagues, I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. aye. Bates? Aye. Bell? I Berryhill, I Block, I Canella, I De Leon, I Fuller, I Gaines, I Galjoni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, 
I Lou. I McGuire. I Mendoza. I Mitchell. I Monning. I Morlock. I Morrell. I Win. I Nilsson. I Pan. I Pavley. I Roth. I Runner. I Stone. I Vidak. I Wykowski. I Wolk. Wolk I. Ayes 40, no zero. The appointments are confirmed. And finally, file item 43, Mr. Pro Tem. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Colleagues, this will be the last uh, gubernatorial appointment today. We have uh, Ms. Polly A. Siever uh, Cordonis, uh, Ms. Polly A. Siever uh, Cordonis, uh, who is a member of Barbering and Cosmetology Board. Uh, she's been uh, a cosmetologist since 1978. Uh, she brings the practical experience of a small business owner uh, to the board. Uh, she was uh, voted on a five to zero vote, uh, Democrats and Republicans together in Senate Rules Committee. Madam President, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, sir. Seeing no discussion or debate, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? I Anderson? I Bates? I Bell? I Berryhill? I Block? I Canella? I De Leon? I Fuller? I Gaines? I Galgioni? I Glazer? I Hall? I Hancock? I Hernandez? I Hertzberg? I Hill? I Weso? I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nilsson, Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Wolk. Wolk, I. Please call the absent member. Nelson. I 39, no zero. The appointment is confirmed. Colleagues will return to motions and resolutions. This is the uh, opportunity to present adjourned and memory motions if you have them. Motions and resolutions. Senator Morlock. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, happy February 29th to everyone today. Uh, I'd like to adjourn along with Senator Pat Bates uh, in memory of Dolph Keller. I had the privilege of going to his life ceremony, his ceremony of his life on Friday. He was born October 20, 1949 in Los Angeles and moved to Pacoima in 1952 with his father, Joe, his mother, Mickey, and his sister, Carol. His bar mitzvah was uh, on, in 1962, and he would always refer to himself as the Jewish boy from Pacoima. Graduated from John H. Francis Polytechnic High School in the spring of 67. Uh, went on to get a BA in psychology, a master's in education in 73, 74, and became a well-known real estate uh, consultant and expert in Orange County. He was a community leader. Uh, he would contact us when we were supervisors. Uh, he had a real burden for uh, those that uh, were in need of housing for seniors, and he had a real strong burden for veterans. So colleagues, we want to remember his family at this time of loss for Dolph Keller. Thank you, Madam President. And thank you. Any additional motions for adjourn in memory? Senator Glazer. Uh, Madam President and members, I ask that uh, we adjourn in memory of Pittsburgh Police Officer Donnie Perriman. Uh, Donnie Perriman was a 22-year Pittsburgh Police Department veteran. Uh, he died on February 15th of an apparent heart attack while working off duty. Uh, Officer Perriman was just 44 years old, and those who knew him described him as an empathetic man who was willing to go the extra mile for the community that he patrolled. Uh, residents said that they felt safe because they knew that Officer Perriman was on duty. Officer Perriman was known to show compassion to those on his beat during last year's holiday season after he responded to a burglary in which a youngster's PlayStation 
gift was stolen, uh, he, uh, out of his own money, purchased that child uh, replacement. Uh, he had also paid for temporary housing for a homeless woman uh, that he encountered in, in, uh, in his duties. Former Pittsburgh mayor and, and current city councilman Pete Longmire spoke of Officer Perriman saying that he really cared about the citizens here in Pittsburgh. He went beyond the duty for them. He took a strong interest in the kids, the elderly folks in the community, and the disenfranchised. He wanted to make Pittsburgh as safe a place as possible. And in doing that, he created a name for himself. It's a very painful loss, not just to his family and his eight-year-old son, uh, but to those in the community who honestly depended on him coming to work and making sure that they were safe. Uh, for his dutiful service to the community, Officer Perriman received the police chief's commendation and was named Officer of the Year. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Officer Perriman, the Pittsburgh Police Department, and the community he unselfishly served as they mourn his loss and celebrate his life. Thank you. Colleagues, just as a reminder, uh, upon adjournment of session, we ask that you all remain on the floor for our historic Children's Citizenship Ceremony. Thank you. Senator uh, Galgiani, for what purpose do you rise? Adjourn in memory. Please proceed. Thank you. I rise to adjourn in memory of my godfather, Pepe Peterson. After serving two years in the U.S. Army, he spent the rest of his career in law enforcement. He served in the Stockton Police Department for 30 years, where he became friends with my father. After 30 years with the Stockton Police Department, he went to work at the District Attorney's Office as a detective in the Homicide Division. He was admired, respected, and loved by generations of young law enforcement officers whom he mentored. I remember going to the Stockton Police Officers Association office and seeing his picture up in several instances where he was with some of the officers on social outings, and they really looked to him for advice and guidance in their younger years on the force. He is survived by his son, Dennis Peterson, his daughter, Belinda Gray, seven grandchildren, and 22 great-grandchildren. I ask that you join me in thinking of him and his family in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Morlock. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we have a wonderful couple in Orange County, Doy and D. Henley, have uh, been very active. Uh, she passed away on the 20th of February, Saturday, after a long illness. Uh, she and her husband, uh, residents of Tustin, married in Springfield, Illinois, in the early 1950s before relocating to Los Angeles and then to Orange County, where Doy went on to own several companies. Uh, he owns a, they own a real estate management company and is a former CEO of a company tied to the aerospace industry, which we're celebrating uh, this week. Uh, they are very involved with Chapman University. It turns out that the Senate Pro Tem of Illinois, his son also went to Chapman University for at least a year uh, in my district, and that's where my youngest son graduated from. But there are several facilities on the Chapman campus that are named for D. Henley. Uh, there is the D's Garden of the Senses at the Fish Interfaith Center, and D the Panther, the light sculpture that decorates the alumni tower of Beckman Hall. Uh, during the holiday season. It's the Chapman Panthers, and uh, Dee has just been an incredible uh, citizen in the County of Orange along with her husband, and I want to remember them uh, in our thoughts and our prayers and uh, adjourn in their memory and her memory today. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much. And Senator Anderson. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in honor of the memory of Evelyn Mary LeBrake, who passed away on February 22, 2016, at the age of 79. Evelyn, a Kumeyaay native, was a tribal elder from Saquon and a former representative to the California Nation's Indian Gaming Association. Evelyn was recognized as a defender of tribal sovereignty, tribal government gaming, and advancing the causes of Native Americans. Evelyn was a firm believer in hard work, and she demonstrated it daily. Evelyn spent over 20 years as a machinist for Whitaker, Whitaker uh, Survival Systems. Evelyn was a driving force when the tribe embarked on the first form of tribal government gaming in the nation with the opening of Saquon Bingo Palace in 1983. 
Evelyn spent long hours traveling between Saquon, Riverside, and Sacramento to do whatever it took to create better opportunities for future generations. She had a very large family and, and, and loved watching her grandchildren and great-grandchildren playing sports and celebrating their birthdays. Evelyn is survived by her nine children, Michael, Jacqueline, Robert, Jamie, Ricky, Kathy, Tina, Anton, and Julie. Evelyn is also survived by her brother, Henry Murphy, as well as 28 grandchildren and 35 great-grandchildren, nephews and nieces. I respectfully ask that we adjourn in the memory of a strong woman with a caring heart, Evelyn Mary LeBreak. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Anderson. I see Mr. Morlock brought his names forward. I'd ask that all of you bring the names of your constituents forward so they can be properly referenced in our daily file. Thank you very much. Any other motions or resolutions? Seeing none, if there's no further business, Senator DeLeon, the desk is clear. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, colleagues, it is 1.59 p.m. and the hour is near. In fact, it is here. So at 2 p.m., um, I would ask for a little patience from all of our colleagues. Uh, we're going to uh, adjourn our session and immediately after, we're going to start the United States uh, citizenship process, which is an actual uh, legally federal uh, 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 program that we're running here today. So there's some formality to it. Uh, they will be putting seats because we'll have the candidate for citizenship to the United States uh, in between each center. So I would ask for patience across the board as they come in and put everything in order. We'll have a color guard and everything. A very nice program that's uh, on uh, your desk. So immediately, in just a few moments, we'll be joined by 20 young people, uh, ages ranging from 10 to 21 uh, years old, all of them born in 12 different countries that will be all candidates uh, for certificates in the swearing-in process of the uh, United States citizenship. So I'd ask all of our colleagues to please remain on the floor for those who are in the hallways. Please come in. And I think this is very special. And I'd like to mention the names of uh, Senators of uh, Janet Nguyen and, and, and Senator uh, John Morlock. Uh, because uh, they are the two individuals uh, who actually became uh, U.S. citizens uh, from Holland and from Saigon, Vietnam. This is something that's very powerful, something very special, that both of you uh, being born in, in polar opposites of the world from each other and, and come to this unique place, this incredible place called the United States of America, and to be actual state senators, respectively, representing your own districts in, in Southern California and Orange County is, 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 is quite a feat. So my hat, I tip off my hat, my respects to both of you. I'm sure this will be very, very powerful for you. So with that, uh, Madam President, we will adjourn right now, but we will uh, convene our session on Thursday at 9 a.m. I just want to thank all of our colleagues on both sides, Democrats and Republicans, for a, an extraordinary, just diplomatic, uh, uh, second, uh, second extraordinary session, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to this incredible event. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. We're going to ask all the staff to please vacate the rear of the chambers to allow room for the parents to come in uh, and witness the session. The Senate will be adjourned. We will reconvene Thursday at 9 a.m.